Welcome back to part four of our series where we are exploring the world of the Azure SQL database. Woo! All right, so in our previous video, we saw how to connect and do very, very, very limited operations inside of SQL Server Management Studio. And really the purpose of that video in the next kind of few videos is purely just to show you how to access your resource on the platform of your choice. Now, while I love SQL Server Management Studio, I preferably like to use the Azure Data Studio. So this is a really neat tool. I never knew about it until I started getting more and more into Azure and Personally, I just call it the Visual Studio Code of Data Services. That's that's kind of how I like to think about it. Um, it's very clean, it's very easy to use. And so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to install Azure Data Studio. It's nothing super complicated, but all you're gonna wanna do is we're gonna be going to the quick start, use Azure Data Studio to connect and query Azure SQL database. And so Inside of here, one of the prerequisites is that you need to install Azure Data Studio, obviously. And so if you click this, it will redirect you to the download page for Azure Data Studio. Now, there's many different ways to get here. I will be providing you a link, but you can go directly on the documentation page, go into SQL, and you can see here Azure Data Studio, download Azure Data Studio. Uh, there's Again, different things here, different tools, but in our situation, this works fine. There's a couple different options depending on what platform you're on. So I'm assuming that you are in you know, Windows. So you just wanna do the user installer recommended, and then it's gonna download it. You can open it. And then once it opens, you just wanna accept, go next. Couple things, um, do you wanna create a desktop icon? I say yes, register Azure Data Studio as an editor for supported file types, check that. And then add path, requires shell restart. So also check that. So once you do all that wonderful things, you can just go here to review what you're having done, then click install. It will run through the installation process and once it's done, you're good to go and you can open it. So I'm gonna exit because I already have it installed. Okay. And then from here, uh, I'm gonna open up my Azure Data Studio. Okay. So let me uh, close out of some stuff. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. So this is the Azure Data Studio. So if it looks like Visual Studio Code, you're not confused. It's very, very similar. It's got a very similar layout and it, I would say, almost looks like a twin. I mean, I couldn't tell the difference basically when I first got here. Um, but once you install it, I'm gonna collapse this really quickly. You have your icons on the left-hand side. So these are your connections. You can do a search. So if you need to search through folders or anything like that, you also have notebooks. So this is a neat little feature. You can actually create notebooks that leverage uh, SQL queries. I think that's pretty cool. You can see your file explorer. So that's your third icon down, or sorry, fourth icon. So if you can see your open editors, any folders that are opened, outlined. You can also uh, leverage repositories with your projects. If you have source control, you can do that as well. And then any extensions. So, um, you know, some, are helpful, some are not so helpful. It really kind of depends what you're trying to do. Um, I have a bunch installed. <laughs> so you can see here I have 10, but there's about 48. And so you can do a lot of things with this. I mean, you can do PostgreSQL, you can do Manage Instance Dashboard, Redgate, um, there's Theme Colors, SQL Data Warehouse Insights, Deletes Database, Demo Mode, I mean, there's just a lot. It really depends what you're trying to do. There's machine learning for SQL databases. Uh, that's actually something I want to start doing soon because you can do Python and stuff like that. Server reports, pretty uh, good ones. I think they have like a they have like a package one that's will install like the ten like most common ones or whatever it is. I think it's this one, the admin pack. 
So you can see it's gonna install this and this and then this. Um, and I think there's like something else as well, but you know, I would just do the basic ones. You don't think anything super crazy until you start getting there. Same here, you can do check for updates, settings, color themes, uh, icon themes. So just like Visual Studio Code, you can change your color themes and stuff like that. So I like their high contrast. I really, really like the blue, um, but you can do lights. You can do also, what else is it? You can do dark, but I'm cool and I like doing high contrast. You can also turn on auto save. I like doing that. And then finally, you can do your Azure account as well. So you can actually install your, I mean, you can actually connect to your Azure account as well. So very uh, different options. You just wanna make sure you have your Azure account linked and logged in. And once you logged in, you're good to go at least on that part. And then you can start creating connections. So there's servers, there's Azure. So once I have Azure, I can start seeing some of my resources. So I can see my SQL server. I can see my SQL databases. I can see my PostgreSQL servers, uh, SQL database managed instances. So this is really helpful uh, to have that little connection to Azure. SQL server, big data clusters. I don't have any of those. And then central management servers. Now with this one, uh, I'm actually gonna delete this connection really quickly just because I don't really need it. But say I wanna do it like old fashioned way, right? So I have my recent connections and then I have my saved connections. So I have one for my previous one. If I want, I could manually type in the information here. So say I wanted to provide that information, I could do that. There's server groups and stuff like that. There's SQL server and then there's Windows authentication, SQL login. It's very similar to what you would do in SQL Server Management Studio. In our situation, let's use the Azure way and see what we can do first. So you can kind of see here, it's um, there's like a little connect icon. So it's gonna take a second because it does have to connect and everything like that to kind of see the resources, but once it loads, we will get there, ideally, if it can connect. No, that's fine, come on. Uh, uh, let's try this. I really hope that's, I'm just gonna copy because I don't trust myself. <laughs> I really don't trust myself. Okay, we'll put this here. And then uh, server groups, we don't, we don't care. Uh, you can give it a name if you want. So we can call this like uh, sample database, something like that. There's more advanced options as well. So you can really start getting specific. So let's see what happens here. Okay, perfect. So that's good. So now we are connected. Apparently when you connect, it likes to zoom you out again. Let's try this. Okay, there we go. And then from here, you can now see that we are on our sample database. This is my home. I have my learn more. I can do a new query right away. I can see my tables. I can edit the data. I can script to create and then select top 1000. So it's just say, for example, I wanna uh, do a top 1000. Is it not gonna do it for me? Well, let's just do it the old fashioned way. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it did. It's just, I guess it's a little bit slow. So just be, bear in mind, sometimes you gotta wait for it to connect. It might not be crazy snappy fast, but I think this is more than fast enough. So we can see that we can do queries just like we've done in SQL Server Management Studio, uh, but now we're just doing it in a what I would call is a more friendly environment when it comes to doing things like, hey, I can format my code. Um, I can, you know, just easy, you know, easily get information and stuff like that. I can change connections. I can disconnect. I can change the database if there's more than one, obviously. I can also do notebooks. So uh, this is kind of neat. I, I've never had used this before, but you can see this is like a Jupyter notebook. So I can say, 
oh, um, this is my uh, test notebook for SQL Server or some, you know, something like that. And then I can also do like, here is my header or something like that, right? You can make it bold or I can say, hey, I want to make this a bold. I can uh, change this to heading one. I can change this to heading two. So very, very nice. I mean, personally, I, I love this. I can highlight certain things. I, I can say, hey, I want to highlight that. I can make this code. Um, I, I can do things like add lists to it as well. I can italicize just a lot of different things, right? So I can say, okay, that's great. And then um, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to add a cell and I'm going to add a code cell. And then from here, I can uh, do my command. So I can say, okay, select star from, uh, what is it? Uh, what's the name of it? CNBC article. So we'll just do this. So I can do my queries as well. And then I can, uh, I can run my cell. Okay, perfect. And then once you do that, they also have some nice little features. So if you want to do something like save as a CSV, save as an Excel, save as JSON, save as XML, and then also you can show a chart, which is kind of neat too. So you can copy as image, save as image, you can configure the chart so you can make it like a part by pie chart, you can do a scatter plot, you can do a table. I mean, it's, it's pretty neat, to be honest. Uh, it's I, I didn't think there was all this functionality inside of it. But you could also do insert queries as well. So if you wanted to, you know, insert data, create a new table like we've done before, you, you, you could do that as well. Um, you could also uh, you know, clone a repository, you know, if, if you wanted to, and maybe that's something that's useful or whatever it might be, but it's, it's pretty neat. I, I really like this tool. I kind of fell in love with it once I uh, started using it. But uh, I think for that, that's pretty much SQL. Uh, sorry, that's uh, pretty much the Azure Data Studio. I would say, you know, again, just my recommendation. I personally love it. I would download it if you get the chance. You can connect to other uh, servers as well too, so don't feel like you're kind of just necessarily restricted. But obviously, you know, if you have Azure, it's it's a nice little tool to to edit and see your data and stuff like that. But I would say at this point, if you have any questions when it comes to using Azure Data Studio, uh, by all means, put them down in the comments below, and I will do my best to get back to you. Otherwise, in our next video. I think what we're going to do is we will probably show you how to connect using the Microsoft SQL Server connection. And then from there, it's probably going to be, since we're already in Visual Studio Code, we'll go over the SQL management package. So that's how you can manage your server using Visual Studio Code and Python and all that kind of fun stuff. But that's going to be helpful when you need to grab information about your particular database. And then after that, we will use PyODBC to insert and do certain operations. So we'll show you how to use a very simple script to uh, collect some data from a news source and then upload that data to a SQL server or SQL database using PyODBC. So yeah, that's what we have coming up. But again, if you have questions, put them down below. Otherwise, we will see you in video number five.